Good morning. Welcome to Philip Clements Ministries and uh, this Sunday morning we just appreciate so much getting welcome into your home and uh, this is actually Palm Sunday and so uh, I want to speak on that subject uh, for just a little while this morning. I'm praying that you'll be blessed and and uh, oh what a what a wonderful time of the year it is because Palm Sunday actually started the week that changed the world. And that's what I want to talk about this morning because Palm Sunday, as you know, some people may say, well, what, what is Palm Sunday? Well, Palm Sunday is the day that Jesus mounted uh, a colt uh, and uh, rode down off the Mount of Olives and they spread the palm branches in front of him and their clothing and things and he rode into Jerusalem and this was Passover week and uh, so that Sunday uh, is known now as Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus rode in to Jerusalem to offer himself for the sins of humanity that people could be reconciled to God and so this, this is the week that changed the world, folks. And so uh, this Sunday, we'll talk about Palm Sunday. Next Sunday, of course, we'll talk about Resurrection Sunday because in between Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday, Jesus, of course, is crucified uh, at Passover and dies for our sins. And so uh, I want to read some scripture this morning, and it's found in the Gospel of Luke. And so if you have your Bibles this morning, uh, I hope that you'll open them up. And uh, let's study the Word for a little while this morning together about the week that changed the world. Luke chapter 19, and we're going to begin reading at verse 28 and read several verses. And so follow along with me. It says, When he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany, at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, where you enter, and you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Loose it, and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, Why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, Because the Lord has need of it. So, those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, Why are you loosing the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road, then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, Rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent. Now, this is, I want you to notice this verse right here. He answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now, as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they're hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and you will not leave in you one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. So, we're so thankful for the Word of God this morning, and uh, this is, of course, the story of Jesus on Palm Sunday, 
riding into Jerusalem. And uh, this, this, I really believe, this is perhaps the most significant and glorious week ever to occur in human history. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And, uh, and so this event actually uh, had been in the mind of God. Uh, you might say uh, at some point before the foundation of the world. But folks, the Bible actually tells us that God is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows everything uh, from ages past to ages future. And there never was a start of the past. So how long has he known everything? Well, he's known everything not at some starting point. He's known everything forever. And so forever, this event has been established in the mind of God. If you notice what the scripture says, and we're not going to look that scripture up this morning, but it says he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, it doesn't mean that he was slain back then. It means that in the mind of God, it was already as well as done because God knew that that's what was going to occur and what was going to happen. And so uh, this event, as we see it happening, uh, and Jesus actually mounting the colt, riding down into Jerusalem, uh, had been established in the mind of God, not just some point in the past, but it had been established in the mind of God forever. And it was the start of a week that's the most glorious, wonderful, awesome week the world has ever known because it's the beginning of the week when Jesus came, died for our sins, and reconciled us to God. So if you look at the story, it says that they set him on a colt nobody had ever been on before. He begins the descent from the Mount of Olives. He ride down through the Kidron Valley, up the other side, getting ready to go into the eastern gate of Jerusalem. And the people, uh, Jerusalem is swollen because it's Passover. And uh, millions of people come to Jerusalem on Passover. And so a multitude of people, uh, it, it could have been uh, thousands upon thousands of people that were lined up as Jesus is coming in. And they're throwing their clothes in front of him and they're putting palm uh, leaves down and they're shouting uh, about the, the king is coming and, and Hosanna to God in the highest, peace on earth. And, and all of it. it's just a wonderful celebration that's going on. And so, uh, of course, we know because we, uh, we know from the word of God, they're rejoicing, most of them, for the wrong reason because... Many of the crowd are rejoicing because they, they're rejoicing because they think he's the Messiah, which he is. But they believe that their Messiah is coming and he's going to throw off the tyranny of Rome and deliver them from the occupation of Rome in Israel. And of course, uh, so they're rejoicing over that and he's coming uh, at this present time, not to do that, but to crush the head of the devil. The seed of the woman, as prophesied in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, is coming to crush the head of the devil, which he's going to do when he dies on the cross. And when he rises from the dead, Satan's head is crushed and the way is made back into God. You know what the Bible says? It says, now, if you're a Christian, you can come boldly right into the very throne room of God uh, because of the blood of Jesus that was shed for you. And so uh, uh, the rejoicing, some are rejoicing for proper reasons maybe, but most of them are rejoicing because they think he's going to overthrow Rome. Noticed in the story that the religious people, you know those people, they're the ones that are that are perfect, they never sin, they never make a mistake, and, and uh, they have all these rules and regulations and all these things that everybody has to live up to and they can't live up to them themselves. And, and the Pharisees, the scribes and Pharisees, they demanded, they said, Lord, tell these people to shut up, tell these people to be quiet. 
And what Jesus says about that indicates that this is uh, the beginning of the greatest week the world has ever known, the most significant time. Because, folks, all of heaven is rejoicing. God is rejoicing. The Lamb of God that was, that was established before the foundation of the world, this is the day that He comes. Prophesied, actually, in the Word of God in, in the book of Daniel. And uh, we won't talk about that this morning, but uh, he comes right on time. He comes right on the, right on the day, uh, 173,880th day from the time of the decree of Cyrus in the Old Testament. That was prophesied, and he comes exactly on that day, exactly the 173,880th day Jesus rides into Jerusalem. And it's a time of rejoicing. It's a time of rejoicing in heaven. God's rejoicing. The angels are rejoicing because mankind is going to be restored unto God the Father. And, oh, it's a joyous time. And they tell Jesus, hush this crowd up. Don't let them be saying these things. And Jesus says, Jesus says, listen, if they don't rejoice and give praise to God, at this moment, the very stones would cry out to me. Oh, hallelujah. Now, saints of God, uh, there's, there's some things we can learn about that. I mean, what, what does, there's something that teaches us, actually. And so, what is it? Uh, we can learn that we, we should uh, constantly be in praise and thanksgiving and worship to God. You say, well, how can I constantly do that? And, and I want to take just a moment because uh, this ministry that we're doing on video is, is predicated and, and done especially for the elderly that cannot get out and go to church. It's done especially for uh, this time of COVID-19 when we have many of you that are so concerned about COVID that you're not attending a place of worship where you're actually at a church service. And so this ministry is coming to you to help strengthen you, to feed you spiritually. And, uh, but there's something about this. Uh, all we're getting in this time is the teaching of the Word of God. But praise and worship, which is what you actually are a participant in in a church service, if you're not attending a church service, you're not involved in praise and worship. And Jesus gives an indication right here when he says, listen, if these people weren't praising and worshiping me right now because of what I'm getting ready to do for them, Jesus says the very stones would cry out. This is, worship is demanded. Worship is actually um, commanded in the word of God. Zechariah 9 and 9 says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. That prophecy was made thousands of years before this day, this Palm Sunday that we're talking about. And you notice in that prophecy, there's a commandment in that prophecy. Rejoice greatly, Zion. And so uh, this is something transcend to all born again people of God. We're to rejoice greatly. This great event demanded praise and worship. It still demands praise and worship today. And so, uh, so let me encourage you this way. If you're, if you're not attending regular church services, and you're, you're getting spiritual food through our teaching, uh, but we're not actually doing praise and worship, then you need to make a conscious effort in your life to praise and worship God every day. I mean, it's good to, it's good to try to develop the habit of when your little peepers open in the morning and, and you say hello to another day. It's a good thing to acquire the habit of saying, God, thank you for this day. Thank you that you're God. Thank you that you love me so much you gave your son to die for me. 
I rejoice in you today. I thank you for what you've done in my life. And so uh, we need to develop this habit, especially when you're not going uh, to where there's actually live praise and worship. We need to develop this habit of praising and worshiping God. Well, we praise and worship Him uh, because of what He did that day. He reconciled us to God. And in that reconciliation, uh, Paul actually said in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, he said these words. He says, But as it is written, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. And so, but he goes on to say, but the spirit of God within us gives us revelation of those things. And so, uh, even though Paul says at a later place, we see through a glass darkly, the spirit of God tries to help us to see some of the things that Christ is purchasing for us in this glorious week that's never been a week like it, riding down on Palm Sunday to die for our sins, going to purchase our salvation. It includes all these wonderful things. Folks, it includes a resurrection for us, a resurrection for us. because he lives, we know we shall live. And so uh, there's a resurrection for all of your loved ones that have died and went on in Christ. There's a resurrection day. Hallelujah. And folks, I want to tell you, it's as sure as anything you could ever believe. There is a resurrection day. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. And because the Bible says he's the first fruits. He's the first fruits of a whole new creation of human beings. And so, and so we know that uh, these bodies, once they die and they go in the ground or whatever happens to them, there's a day when God's going to speak a word and a shout and all the dead in Christ are going to rise. Paul teaches and talks about it in the letter to the Corinthians and the Thessalonians. And, and so, and we know we're going we're gonna to arise with a new body. Oh, man, is that something to rejoice over? Absolutely it is. You see, it's going to be a new body that's not empowered by blood any longer. See, right now, life is in the blood. If you, if, you, if you start bleeding, you bleed enough blood out of your body, you die because life is in the blood for the body. But in the resurrection body, uh, the empowerment, the life source is going, to be, um, is going to be the Spirit of God and not, uh, it's not going to be blood. And so, folks, this is why in the resurrected body, You'll never have a headache. You'll never have high blood pressure, hypertension, hardening of the arteries. You'll never have a stroke. There'll never be a heart attack. Uh, there'll never even be a headache because, folks, the Holy Spirit doesn't get any of that. Amen. It's God. God is our life source in this resurrected body. And, uh, and there's all kinds of amazing things that are involved in that. The scripture says we don't know exactly how we'll be, but we do know. John says we know we'll be like him. And we know that when he arose in his resurrected body, uh, he came right through walls. Even though he had a body and he could eat, he ate with the disciples. He said, you can touch me. He told Thomas, put your, put your finger in the nail prints in my hand. Uh, and so he had a physical fleshly body. But it was powered now not by blood, but by the Holy Spirit of God. He could walk right through a wall. He could travel at the speed of thought. Uh, I'm telling you, folks, I, I, I often say we'll be able to leap, leap tall buildings with a single bound. Uh, there will be no limit, limitations as far as uh, what we know of this physical world. Oh, do we have reason to rejoice because of that hope? Oh, absolutely. This hope includes a place. He said, I, I go to prepare a place for you. It's a place he's preparing. Jesus is preparing Christian exclusively for you. How good can carpenter Jesus build you a mansion? Oh, I have not seen, 
ear hasn't heard, never entered the heart of man, how good he can build a mansion for you. How beautiful is it going to be? Eye has not seen, ear hasn't heard, how beautiful it can be. Oh, folks, there's going to be colors we've never imagined. There's going to be streets of translucent gold. This mansion's going to be situated in the New Jerusalem. There will be no crime, no sorrow, no sickness, no tragedy, no worry, no anger, lust, or perversion, no murder, no hurt, no separation. It's a new world wherein dwells only righteousness, fellowship with family, the saints of God, the angels, uh, the saints of the ages, and God himself forever participating. Folks, think about this. Participating with God. See, God is, God is, God always has been, God always will be. The, the, this new heaven and new earth is going to roll on for the aeons to come. And we're going to be participants with God in all he's ever going to do in creating worlds and, and things forever and ever and ever. We're going to be a part of the eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, the, the things that God's prepared for those that love him. All of that is involved with this week that changed the world. No wonder when Jesus rode down into Jerusalem and they said to him, tell your disciples to be quiet. He said, listen, if, if they were quiet about this, he said the rocks would cry out. Oh, saint of God, how thankful we need to be on a continual basis. I don't, and it doesn't even matter what kind of hardship we're going on, we're going through. Oh, folks, he's done wonderful things for us. And so, what a great and glorious day this was, Palm Sunday. And we're celebrating that today. This is, this is Resurrection Week. And so, the Lord willing, if Jesus doesn't come before then, uh, we will be talking about Resurrection Sunday uh, next week. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes we call it Easter. I like to call it Resurrection Sunday better. So, um, we need to rejoice in the Lord. And so, I want you to just be encouraged today, Saint of God. Just be encouraged in the Lord today. Oh, He came and offered Himself. This day that we're talking about today, as I told you, mentioned earlier, uh, it, it was prophesied in the Word of God exactly what day it would be. Uh, 69 weeks of years from the decree of Cyrus. And, uh, and we, we may talk about that a little bit more next Sunday. If you, if you figure that out, 69 weeks of years at the Jewish 360 day uh, year uh, in the Jewish calendar, it figures out actually, and this is actually proven, uh, it figures out 173,880 days. And folks, I want to tell you that all the promises, the Bible says this, all the promises of God are yes, and amen to you if you're a child of God. Everything he promises, the new body, the new mansion in heaven, the new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem, the ages to come where you'll never die, never have a pain, and, uh, and, and just be with family and there'll never be a separation. All these promises are yes and amen. And you kind of you can kind of see that if you look at this promise of when uh, when this day of Palm Sunday is going to happen, and it says it's going to be uh, this is like uh, over two thousand years before it actually occurs. D uh, Daniel prophesies and says he's going to come and ride on the 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 donkey's colt on the one hundred and seventy three thousand eight hundred and eightieth day from the time Cyrus makes his decree to rebuild Jerusalem. And on the 173,880th day, Jesus tops the rise, pauses on the crest of the Mount of Olives. Thousands of people are rooting and cheering, throwing the palm branches down 
It's Palm Sunday, the day God prophesied 2,000 years before, exactly to the day, not one day before, not one day after, exactly to the day. This is how exactly God is committed to every promise of his word, all of it. So saying of God, if you're sick in your body this morning, the Bible says there's a day when your healing's coming. If you're, if you're worried, if you're stressed, uh, the Bible says that he'll make it work for your good. Oh, stand upon his promises, child of God. Rejoice in him. Rejoice evermore because Jesus came and died for our sins. Palm Sunday, the week that changed the world. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you today. And Lord, we do. Our hearts just rejoice in you today. Oh, we give you praise and glory and honor because that you love us so much you gave your only begotten Son to come and die for our sins that we could be reconciled to you. Father, I pray you'd strengthen, bless, and heal every child of God today. Lord, I pray that if there's any watching and they don't know you, I pray that today they would say, Lord Jesus, I trust you for my salvation. I ask you to save me. And you promised in your word if they would ask, you would do it. And Father, I pray that you would help them today to make that decision. Be with your people throughout this week. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching today. You can tune in every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock on YouTube or Facebook. And uh, so blessings to you. We hope to be with you next Sunday on Resurrection Day. God bless.